so let's shout out to what are some investment options excluding property so non-property investment options where can you guys invest some money okay where could you invest money okay so stocks, stocks shares. And shares keep coming okay keep going guys keep going bitcoin okay. tech business bonds okay keep going keep it going there's lots and lots more Gold, yeah, commodity. Gift. What do you mean by that, John? Okay, gil ah, gil ah, okay, yep. okay. Oh, sorry, yeah. <laughs> My fault. <laughs> My eyesight, yeah. Okay, uh, okay, travel, kind of. Travel, traveling with my kids. Kind of. Um, depends on how you structure that as an investment. You could be buying shares within something that other people travel to, so kind of. Skills. What do you mean by skills okay. here? So, um, yes, you can invest in your skills. Uh, okay. So, okay, so converting your skills into business, is that, is that what you mean? So, yeah, so investing in yourself. Yeah. So, I like that. Forex. It's the first time that's actually come up, so I like that. Forex. By the way, excuse the writing, I am an engineer. Okay. So I really like that. IP, so intellectual property. Mm -hmm. Okay, 100% Ben. Uh, would you prefer Ben or Benjamin? I'm pretty easy either way, but I don't. I want to make sure I don't offend you by keep calling you a name that you don't like being called. Um, Benjamin, are you okay with Ben, or do you prefer Benjamin? <laughs> I, I have to ask the question because, um, you know, it would annoy me if I like to be called one thing and I get called something else. So, okay, while you respond, um, can you guys think of any others? I mean, this is, a, this is a pretty good list. I'm quite happy with this. Okay. Good. Sounds like we're all good. Right. Now, what I want to do is I want to go through some of the pros and cons of some of these. Okay. So pros and cons of stocks and shares. Okay. So what are some of the pros and cons of stocks and shares? Okay. Okay. It's volatile. Quick. Okay, it's a volatile market. Okay, it's, it's very quick moving. Um, so, okay. Fluctuation. Yeah, okay, so volatile. Yeah. Okay, now volatile is a pro and a con. Okay, it's a pro and a con. Okay, it's risky. Okay, so that's a con. Okay, unpredictable. Okay, do you own cash flow? From stocks and shares okay you have no control okay which would come under um unpredictable mm -hmm. okay perfect okay so it is deemed as a very high risk strategy but in volatile markets you can make a lot of money if you're very good at it i think something like 90 something percent of all stocks and shares traders lose money they don't make money they lose money overall okay which is pretty huge okay and you have to put a lot of money in now let me ask do you get a residual cash flow from stocks and shares? I know uh, Anna's already answered, but I want to re, re, re the question. Okay, so no cash flow, so no income until you sell the asset. Guess who actually makes the most money in the entire stocks and shares industry? Okay, this is really interesting. Correct, no income, exactly right. So the people that make the most money are the stocks and shares trading platforms, where they make what's called a spread on everything that you do. The broker's exactly right. Okay, yeah. so you get the online brokerage firms like the, the platforms and you get actual physical brokers. Okay, they make all the money. Okay, now let's let's look at, um, so that's stocks and shares done. Bitcoin, pros and cons of Bitcoin. Okay, and I think you'll agree it pretty much falls into exactly the same line as stocks and shares, right? It's a volatile market. You don't know if it's going up or down. You do not earn a residual cash flow. It's unpredictable. Um, and although, although I don't think it's a bad investment, um, prices only rise in Bitcoin. Mm. I don't know. I know a lot of people that lost a real big chunk of money. Um, but okay. I mean, I understand your perspective. Uh, I, I beg to differ if you look at the graphs. As an overall, it's rising, yes. Um, and I think it is the future. Uh, we're going to move into cryptocurrencies in the future. Um, but I think we're still a little bit early for it to be uh, per Bitcoin. Um, prices only rise per Bitcoin. Um, okay. Um, so they, so they don't mine as easily. Okay. Um, okay. 
I mean, I don't, I don't spend a lot of time with Bitcoin, but from where I stand, I think there are some benefits. Um, the negatives are it's not backed up by a fundamental asset. So it's not asset backed. It's a fiat currency. Now it's an online fiat currency, but it's still a fiat currency. Um, it doesn't give you cash flow. It is still unpredictable. You don't know whether you're getting in at the right time. And is it very liquid? Is it easy to buy and sell Bitcoin? I don't, I don't know. Okay. I hope it is. I, just I, I believe it is. I don't know. <laughs> I don't, I don't invest in Bitcoin specifically. Yeah. Uh, uh, not protected by FSA, um, so that would then put it back into the high risk category. Okay, so that's Bitcoin. Tech, investing in tech. Uh, so a venture capital company will typically expect one in 20 of the businesses that they invest in to actually succeed. One in 20, okay, which is a fascinating figure. Um, I would expect much higher, but they say 90, well, um, out of the 20, I think they said 17 will fail. Two will do okay, where they'll get their money back, and one will do brilliantly, where they make up more than enough money to justify investing in the others. Okay, so tech and business, they sort of fall within the same field, as far as I'm concerned. Um, so therefore, is it, uh, is it a risky investment, investing in certain technologies or certain businesses? Is it potentially a risky investment? Okay, yeah, it's, it's, it's a risky investment, right? Um, is it a volatile market? Is there the potential for that business to go up or down in value really quickly? Okay, primarily down. Okay, yeah, so it's volatile. Yeah. Okay. Can you earn cash flow though? Yes, in the shape of dividends. Okay, so that's one of the good things. So you can get cash flow. Is it liquid? Is it easy to trade your shares within these businesses? Is it easy to just go, right, I want to sell up and within the next week, you know, you're going to get your money? Okay. The answer is no. Okay, no, it's it's not easy. Okay, so that's some of the pros and cons of tech and business. It's exactly the same. Now bonds. Okay, bonds. Okay, do they give you a high return? Okay. Um. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Benji. <laughs> uh, Benji would do uh, just fine. That's yeah. a cross between Ben and Benjamin. I like that, Benji. I like that. I like that a lot. That's very cool. So, thank you. Okay. <laughs> Call me any name you want, baby. You got my kind of humor. I like that. Okay. By the way, it took a while to type that. <laughs> it's a long message, though. It's a long message. Okay. So, bonds, they tend to have very low returns. Okay. Very low. Are they secure, though? Okay. Are they secure? Yeah, pretty secure. Not very secure, but they're pretty secure. Bonds are pretty secure because they give you such low returns. Okay. Um, so therefore, it's not a risk. It's not risky. You don't tend to get cash flow from bonds or much in the way of cash flow from bonds. It's primarily just the value increase through time. Is that is that correct? I don't invest in bonds for because it doesn't give much return. Okay, that's correct. Good. Yeah. Okay, gold and commodities. Is that or is that not pretty much the same as stocks and shares? Okay, I'm talking about how you trade commodities. If you buy a piece of gold and you keep that, it's slightly different. But yeah. if you trade commodities, is it fair to say it's pretty much the same as stocks and shares? Okay, yeah, it's 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 traded in exactly the same way. Okay, it's still volatile, etc. Now, gilts, I know very little about gilts, very very little. But from my understanding, gilts are very similar to bonds. Is that is that correct? I don't, I've never gilts is the first time it's actually come up. Yeah, I have yeah, heard of this for, for sure. such a long time. Yeah, I've forgotten what it is. Yeah. Okay, cool. So it would be following exactly the same as bonds. Now, investing in travel property. Okay, government investment. Ah, okay, so investing in something in the government. Okay, cool. Thank you, John. I okay. appreciate that one. Um, so um, travel. Now, when you say travel as an investment, what do you mean? I just want to be clear. Um, whoever said travel as an investment, uh, what do you mean? Uh, just so we have an understanding. While you're typing that out, um, next one, investment in skills. Now, I really like this one. This is the first time it's actually come up in one of the sessions, and it's probably one of your best ones that you're ever going to get. I really like that. Okay, now, when you invest in your skills, is that a volatile market, or is that a solid investment that will continue to see you through for much of your life? Okay. okay it's, it's a solid investment, right? So it is a secure investment. Okay, so, oh, so it's a secure investment. Okay, is there potential of high returns? Yes, providing you use, use it. it. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. 
Okay, which is a big thing because a lot of people get educated and they don't use the education, which is just madness. Okay, um, is it liquid? Okay, is it easy to be able to get your money back out of yourself? Okay, and the answer is no. Does a cash flow potentially mm. if you use, use it? it. Uh, is it unpredictable? Yes, because you don't know if you're going to use it. Okay, the trick is to have somebody there kicking you up the butt to make sure you use it. Is it risky? No. Investing in yourself is never going to be risky because that knowledge will always be something you can use for in the future. Is it volatile? No. Okay, I really like that. Okay, Forex. Okay, Forex. Is that or is that not pretty much the same as stocks and shares and commodities? Okay, just want to check in. Are you guys okay with me basically ticking it off as being very similar? Principally. Yeah. Okay, principally, it's very similar. Okay. Yeah. Okay, and then intellectual property, so IP. So I like that. Um, the challenge with IP is it's very easy to recreate something with a 30% difference to be able to do it that way. Um, but yes, so IP, kind of yes. Okay, so for me, I would deem IP as pretty risky as an investment just because it's very easy to recreate something and change it 30% to make it your own. Okay, but it is an investment vehicle, so I like that. Okay. Right. Now, if we take a look, what is it that we would like from our investments? Okay. What is it we would actually like from our investments? So if we do this together, okay. Okay. What, what would you guys like from your investments? Would you like it to, to be secure? Go on, guys. Let's go with the cash flow. Cash flow. Yep. Okay. Oh, sorry. Let's go with the chat. Okay. You want it to cash flow. Yeah. Low risk. Okay. High return. High returns. Little work over time. Okay. Um, Stable. Okay, which I'd put down as secure. Yeah. Uh, Get to work. Um, mm, low, so, yeah, low risk. Uh, so, yep, yeah, uh, low risk. Okay. Now, there's only one more thing that I would like to um, add to this. Oh, shit. Speed. Okay, and that's liquid. Okay, so those are some of your typical investment options and that's some of the downfalls that you have. Okay, these are some of the downfalls you have within those investments. Okay, easy to draw down cash. Exactly, so that it's liquid. liquid so that's the liquid, term. Yeah. If it's liquid, it's easy to draw down the money. Now the Katana method, so what we're, guys, what we're gonna be working with you guys this weekend is we're gonna work with you on how we like to invest and what we think is the best investment vehicle in the world. Okay, and that is property. Now that's obviously why you guys are here, you know that. Okay, but that is the Katana method of investment. Now, further down the line, when you get to financial freedom, we will work with you on further investments, other investments to diversify your portfolio and diversify yourself. Okay, but in the meantime, we're going to focus on property. Let me explain why. Is property secure? Give me a one if it is secure. Okay. Yes. Okay. Does property give you a good cash flow? Okay, give me a two if it gives you good cash flow. Okay. Can you get high returns from property? Give me a three if you can get high returns from property. Okay. Good. Is property little work after you've set it up? Give me a four if that's the case. Okay. Okay. And is property low risk? Give me a five if it's low risk. Okay. Good. Is property liquid? Is it easy to trade in property very quickly and get your money out in a matter of weeks? It's number six. Not really. That is the only, yeah. the only downfall in property. That is the only downfall in property. It is not a liquid asset. When your money's in there, it's pretty much stuck in there for a while. Um, so if it's a good one, yes, you're going to continue to earn your money back through cash flow. Okay, which is over here. Okay, but it takes a little bit of time for that to happen. Okay, super cool. Yeah, right. Say if you need if you need money urgently tomorrow, um, can you sell your house today? That's the trick, right? Because stocks yeah. and shares you can potentially sell very quickly because it's a much more volatile market. Talking about publicly listed, not like I own shares in my mate's company. Okay, so 
this is why this is the only downfall with property. And ironically, that very downfall, the fact that it is not a very liquid market, is the very reason that you have a lot of the other items yeah. above. Okay, it's very, very cool.